Okay. Hey guys, uh, got today uh, old silver tone Dan Electro 1448 electric guitar that I wanted to do. I did a uh, demo of a uh, video on this, but I wanted to do uh, like a teardown video and kind of show some of the quirky things about the guitar. Uh, so first off, before we take it apart, uh, we'll just kind of look at it. The finish is a, a black finish with gold sparkles in it. So I think the process of how they painted this is it probably was just a salt shaker full sprinkles that they sprinkled on the wet paint. You can see the neck has kind of a uh, sunburst to it where they uh, most likely just didn't finish the neck so they wouldn't have to do any kind of uh, masking or uh, cleanup work on the fingerboard. I'm sure it just made the production of the guitar a little faster. Uh, a couple other things. The uh, headstock. You can see the logo. Looks like it's a stencil or maybe a, a silk screen, but it's got kind of a double ghost image going to it. So obviously when it was done originally, they didn't spend very much time on it and threw either silk screen in it or spray in it. The mask moved and yeah, you can see there's like almost two E's at the end and kind of a double shadow to the T. Uh, some other weird thing about weird things about the guitar is the tuners are they're backwards than normal. You know, where you'd expect that to lower it, it, it brings it up in pitch. So, yeah, just kind of a little bizarre thing that you got to get used to on the guitar. Uh, you'll notice that I got it out of tune, but um, the guitar is pretty resonant the way it is, and that's really has to do with the construction of the instrument. We'll get a closer look at that later. And then, I don't know, if we look at the side, on the side they used a vinyl tape. There again, I think it was just done to, it's supposed to be a, a pine frame under this, so you would have seen kind of some ugly wood if they didn't do that and just painted it. I don't think it would be as nice as what the, the masonite top and how that, that was finished. So... See the backwards tuners. I just instinctively went to go lower it and ended up tightening them. Something you'd have to get used to on this instrument. Uh, I'll start by taking off the neck. So the neck is just held on by three screws, pan head. Number two Phillips. So on the inside of the uh, guitar, there's a Neck date, I guess, maybe. I don't know what that'd be. 2044, something to do with production. See on each side, there's some fitting that probably went on after the guitar was made. I guess it probably didn't fit into the neck pocket, so somebody just quick hit it on the sander and popped it in there. This is a, uh, looks like just a tack that was pounded in there. What that's there for is the neck adjustment. There's a bolt that goes through the body through here that you can tighten up. And what that's going to adjust is, uh, you know, the angle of the neck, whether it's more like that or straight in the neck pocket. So a real easy way of adjusting the, uh, the neck. Um, there's no, there's no adjustable truss rod in these instruments. Uh, looking at the end, there appears to be just a piece of metal 
that must run through the neck as a uh, as a support. I just set set that in a channel. They uh, they routed before putting on the fingerboard. Um, looks like they put it on the uh, the base side too, thinking that maybe that would help to uh, keep the neck from twisting or bowing on uh, one side and not the other. Um, this particular instrument really wasn't played. You can see the frets. The frets are about in perfect shape. And another thing you can you can see on the instrument is um, the frets have been filed. It looks like this was done originally to the guitar. You can see that the well, the first fret is much flatter than the one in front of it. There's really not much for crowning on it at all. So the frets definitely were pounded in there, you know, haphazardly at best. But this particular instrument plays really nice. Uh, had done some uh, setup work on it and actually is a pretty nice plan. Old Silver Tone or Dan Electro, whatever you want to call it. The uh, fingerboard is Brazilian Rosewood. Uh, a really nice, yeah, nice slab. It's got some figure into it. The neck itself, I'm not sure what the material is. It's, it's a pretty, seems like a pretty non-dense wood. So, I don't think it's maple. Maybe it's poplar. Um... The body, how that's made, is it's it's masonite on the top. So is the the pick guard. Let's see here. Oops, a daisy. Card here. Oh, these screws are a number one Phillips. Oh, I got one out here. I have one in the garage. Well, just round them off, you know. It wasn't doing much at all. So, first off, in case you don't know, these these were made by Dan Electro. So they're real similar to all the U1s and U2 uh, Dan Electros that are really highly coveted by players. Um, this, of course, was a low-cost guitar that was sold through uh, the Sears catalog. And for a lot of people, it would have been their, their first instrument. Um, either that or first electric guitar. Uh, this particular one came with the amp uh, in the case. It works, works well. Uh, the amps, though, are known to be kind of a, a dangerous item, um, just in the way that they don't use a... Uh, a proper power transformer uh, and the uh, the hot if, if plugged in the wrong way the hot is connected to the ground of the amplifier chassis just through like I like what would be a death cap in a fender I believe so it, the amplifiers are kind of like known for being a dangerous item to operate, but a lot of people play them constantly. And yeah, if you're getting if you if you're gonna get a shock, it's gonna it's gonna be painful probably and ruin your day. But um, yeah, hopefully it doesn't kill you. So uh, I was talking about the top material being uh, masonite, and that's what the pick guard is too. Uh, it's what I guess old countertops were made of. You saw it a lot at, at some point. Um, another oddity about the instrument too is that the tone and volume control are backwards from what you normally expect. The tone is right here, the volume's right here. So another thing to throw you off. Uh, so 
this is completely shielded. Uh, it's just some copper, thin copper bent over into shape. And you see this on other Dan Electro instruments as well. Uh, the idea is just to keep noise away from the controls and getting back into the amplifier. Um, so this has never been cracked open before. Uh, another little piece of masonite, a couple, you know, is that the same number? 2044? 2044. I don't know. Is that, is that production? Is that a year? Not really too sure. So in here, uh, 137 uh, pot codes or CTS, although they do just look different than, uh, than other ones. 64. It's going to be 1964, 13, I believe is the 13th week of production. Uh, I cannot see, well, okay. So these are the same part numbers, HM2749. And this pot here, which is a volume control is 100K. Uh, so this, I, being the tone control, I would assume is also a 100K uh, uh, pot. So there's an odd thing. It's 100K, not 250K. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, what would a 100K pot do for you? Would it block more high frequencies? I mean, it's a real sparkly guitar. I wonder what these are would sound like with like a 500K pot. I don't know. Um, Couple little pieces of tape on the back side of the controls, it looks like just to keep it from shorting out on the uh, copper shield. Uh, looks like there's some extra wires run through here. Oh no, that's just attached to a ground that they put on the back side, so. A couple ground wires. Otherwise, everything is happening in here. Switchcraft jack. This is a 0 0.1, 200 volt. Not the manufacturer on the capacitor, but yeah. So 1964 it is. Uh, these bridges are kind of a, a little odd too. If you want to adjust them, you got to really take them off and move them from the back side. The saddle is a Brazilian rosewood hunk. And then, yeah, they're just, they're just bolted to the back side. So you have to loosen it up and move it. You can usually move them a little bit uh, after you have them positioned. Uh, I'm not going to mess with this one. Though. Check the intonation and I guess take it off and adjust it if it needs to. Or maybe you could just have this loose enough that you can move it around. I don't think there's much else to look at inside the body. You can see the back side of the masonite. It's the rough side. You can see the inside of the frame, which actually the grain of the wood looks similar to what the neck is. I wonder if the whole thing... I said I believe it's supposed to be a pine frame. So on the inside, yeah, there's a so there's block of wood here, and aside from that, you've got a block that goes around the neck heel, probably around all these horns. And then once you get here, it's pretty hollow. So if you play this instrument acoustically, it's got a nice resonance to it. And that's one thing I always liked about the Dan Electro guitars is they're almost along the lines of like a thin line Telecaster or something like that. And the way that they, uh, they could just really hold on to a note.
The pickups are held in from the back side, or I guess the pickup, singularly. It's held in from the back side. Remember, right? Yeah, it kind of just wood screws. Well, sheet metal screws, I guess. I go in. This pulls right up. So this is a Dan Electro pickup. It's a single coil. Um, this particular one, the uh, the tubes are cracked on it. So they're cracked here, they're cracked there. See, they're cracked on the back side. Uh, I'm not gonna fuck with that at all. I mean, the pickup works, it sounds good. So yeah, I'm not gonna mess with that and ruin it. The mounting system, it's a couple of aluminum brackets with uh, it's like some brass springs being made to push the, uh, the pickup up when you loosen it from the back side. That's that's the pickup on it. I don't think there's really anything else to talk about with the body. You see the strap buttons there. They're a design that I'm not familiar with. They appear to be something that was just used on, I guess, Dan Electro instruments. Going back to the neck, I mean, a couple other little features I missed that I, I didn't mention. Um, the uh, the nut on these are a, uh, they're aluminum, they're me it's a metal nut. So that I think adds to the brightness and chime of these instruments as well. Rosewood, or Brazilian rosewood board, I mentioned that, so. Not much to these instruments. Uh, I just thought it'd be interesting to take take it apart, and I needed to see what the uh, the date codes on the potentiometers were. So might as well take a close look at everything. But if you have any questions, reach out. Let me know. Uh, otherwise, yeah. Thanks for watching.